Gents, this is a blazer. This is a blazer. And so is this. And gents, believe it or not, this is a blazer as well. So the question is, what style blazer should you be wearing? Especially if you want to look good. And are there blazer styles you should avoid wearing? In today's video, gents, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to look amazing every time you wear a navy blazer. So why in today's modern age does a man need to own a navy blazer? Well, here's an example. Here's a man dressing average. Here's that man looking much more attractive. Here's a guy looking regular. Here's that same guy looking rakish. The reality is few garments in a man's wardrobe possess the power to transform your look from good to great. A well-tailored classic blazer on an average guy builds up the shoulders, slims up the silhouette, and takes his look from okay to friggin' amazing. But what exactly is a blazer? And where did they come from? So a blazer is a structured jacket that's considered less formal than a suit jacket, but more formal than a sports jacket. Now they're traditionally crafted from a solid dark colored fabric, oftentimes in a dark blue navy to be precise. Now traditionally they were distinguished from sports jackets because of their structured shoulders and of the use of higher contrast buttons. Silver, gold, sometimes even mother of pearl. Now stylistically, they're very similar to sports jackets and suit jackets with the notch lapels. And when it comes to buttons, you'll normally see a two button jacket, although occasionally you will see three button blazers and double breasted blazers. Now when it comes to materials, traditionally we would see worsted wools, but over the last decade we've seen materials such as serge, hop sack, flannel, fresco, cashmere, and even linen being used in blazers. Now really quick, some common mistakes I see guys make when they're trying to wear a blazer. First up, a blazer is not a suit. A suit is a jacket and trousers made from the same material. Blazer, on the other hand, has trousers that are made from a different material. You don't have to have high contrast, but you can. But what we're trying to avoid are trousers that have a material too close to the blazer because then it looks like you're trying to make a suit. Next up, not nailing the fit. As I've talked about before, fit is king. You need to know the name of your tailor. Make sure everything you wear, especially your jackets, are adjusted to fit you as well as they can be. And never buy a jacket that can't be adjusted to your body as it is. A poor fitting garment that costs 2000 bucks is going to be outshined by a garment that cost a hundred bucks that fits properly. And the next mistake is having your shirt collar go right underneath the jacket and get lost down there. Seriously, gents, I see this look all the time. A guy's got a nice dress shirt. He's matching it with that blazer, but the collar is just flapping and falling all over the place. Now you can go out there and buy all new shirts with more structured collars and plackets. Or gents, you can check out Slick Collar, the sponsor of today's video, who've created a device that makes sure that your collar isn't flapping all over the place. Now seriously, gents, check this out. It fits right underneath your collar. Whether or not you're wearing a dress shirt, right here with a sports jacket, or if you just simply are wearing a polo. The slit collar fits in right underneath your existing collar and make sure that it sticks up and it holds up properly. And gents, in case you didn't know, you actually get two slit collars in the package. One of them is going to be a bit smaller. And as you can see here, this one works with polo shirts. And as a bonus, gents, they also throw in four collar stays so they'll keep your collars pointed and looking good. And the best part about all this, guys, the price. An incredibly affordable accessory that you can bring and no one's going to know you're wearing it. And depending on the size of your neck, the size of the collar, it is adjustable. So truly it's a one size fit all. They're durable, they're flexible, and they come with a 100% money back guarantee. Now gents, I'm linking the slit collar down in the description of today's video with the best deal on the web. Use that link, use that discount code, go check out Slick Collar, awesome company. So where did the blazer originate? Now there are two prevailing theories. One goes back to 1825 to the British frigate HMS Blazer. They were preparing for a royal inspection from Queen Victoria and the ship's captain, unsure about his crew's look, decided to standardize their uniform. The result was a navy jacket with brass buttons with the ship's badge. And what happened is it set a trend. Not only did it catch the Queen's eye, all of a sudden other ships started picking up on this. Now the second theory revolves around St. John's College in Cambridge. So back in 1837, the rowers would wear brightly colored jackets. Now the reason they did this is the distinguishing colors were supposed to separate them from their competition and they were called blazers because of their blazing colors. Now my personal theory is that actually both stories are correct. Both these jackets grew out of the prevailing fashions and needs of their particular times and situations. And if you think about it, it makes sense because blazers are more than just the navy blazers that commonly most men wear. And I would recommend for most of you guys out there, by the way. But those regatta blazers, yes, the ones associated with that nautical rowing, those occasionally are seen at special events. And if you didn't pick up on it, regatta blazers, guys, are not for everyday wear. If you're part of a club, if you're part of a team, if it's part of your guys' uniform, go for it. But for the majority of people, a regular navy blazer without the badge, unless you're going to a school that requires it, that's going to be the uniform we're talking about going forward. Now, we do 
know in the year 1880, the Henley Royal Regatta actually adopted the blazer as part of its uniform. Hence, all of a sudden, it was becoming more mainstream. We saw Savile Row tailors start to take up the blazer as something that they would show, something they can make for their patrons. And going into the early 20th century, we started seeing blazers become part of club uniforms. Everyone seemed to want to have their own uniform, their own look for their tribe, for their group, so that they could distinguish themselves from others. And from sports clubs, it started to go to schools. So, all of a sudden, we had young men and eventually young women starting to wear blazers as well. Now, after World War II, we saw the rise of casual clothing and in the 1950s, the blazer started to really make its mark with Hollywood icons like Cary Grant and Paul Newman championing the blazer look. Now, since that time period, the blazer has established itself as a great go-to jacket between formal and more informal. Again, we're not talking ultra casual here. We're talking more, okay, it's a step up from a sports jacket. This is something when suits aren't required, but everyone is still dressing up. What to wear? A blazer oftentimes is the perfect choice for a man. On a side note, let's talk about the Lindy effect. You may remember I've talked about this in past videos. That's how long something has been around is most likely how long it's going to continue to be around. The blazer has been around for about 150 years. What does that tell you? You can go out there and buy a well-fitted, classic, quality blazer and you can rest assured that this is a garment you will be able to wear for the next decade. It will not go out of style. It's a classic garment from Andy Warhol to, again, you look at modern day movie stars. People are pulling off this look and it can be conservative. You can dress it, have a little bit more fashion fun with it. It is a classic piece that really just leave it up to your imagination. There are so many different ways to wear this. And with so many different ways to wear this, let's talk about how to pull this off. The garments that you're going to want to pair with the navy blazer. So, one of the easiest ones is a simple white dress shirt. As you can see with this dress shirt here, I had a little bit of fun, got a contrasting material in it, but you could go with a solid white, you could go with a light blue, you can just go with a white shirt with blue stripes, usually going up and down. Right there, it's a classic look. It works with the blue. And again, the blazers can come in variations of blue. I've also seen blazers in maroon. I've seen them in dark green. Usually, they are going to be solid though or with a slight pattern that can't be seen until you get up close. Now, remember, with the blazer, we're going to have contrasting buttons. In the case here, I've got these white mother of pearl, so it's going to really pull out the shirt. It's going to draw even more attention to these. A lot of times, though, a blazer, you're going to go maybe with the gold, you know, with maybe a nautical theme to them, silver, really fine. And what I like about a good blazer, even if you wanted to, you know, normally I don't, okay, reusing a suit jacket really quick, I will say that if you have a suit that you do not wear, it's in navy, you could actually turn that jacket into a blazer by changing out the buttons either take it into a tailor or just doing it yourself. But that's an easy way to kind of bring a garment like this into your wardrobe without having to spend a whole lot. Now, of course, you don't have to just go with a dress shirt. You can actually go with a casual button down like an Oxford or something like that, but you could also bring in a white polo or maybe a polo of various colors. I think that polos work really well with a navy blazer. They are going to bring it down, so make sure that your trousers work appropriately. And we'll get into trousers here in a second. What about sweaters? I do think a turtleneck is, you know, classic, elegant. You could also simply go with a v-neck. Blazers work really well. I'm not going to get into neckties just yet, but if you're going to wear a necktie with that dress shirt, you could easily, you know, layer it with a sweater, especially if you're going to be near the water, it's a bit cool. That look actually works really well. So, for some reason, a lot of people worry that matching a blazer jacket with trousers is somehow going to be difficult. It's actually relatively easy because you got so many options. Again, especially if you stick with a solid navy blazer or maybe go with a medium blue. What's great about this, it works with so many of the existing trousers probably in your wardrobe. First up, anything that you have in gray, especially if it is going to be a little bit more of a contrast. You don't want a gray that's so close to that navy that it actually looks like a suit. Instead, you want to go for maybe a medium gray, a lighter gray. Now, personally, because most of my blazers are going to use a fine worsted wool that actually has a very smooth kind of surface to it, I'll wear gray flannel trousers. Again, the flannel is going to have that napped weave and because of the texture difference, it works really well. Even if the blazer and the trousers are relatively close in shade, you can clearly see they're not the same material because of the texture difference. Another easy option, especially during the summer, are going to be chinos. Chinos, as you know, are made from cotton. Not only are they durable, but relatively inexpensive. Just make sure you get a good fit and you can bring in a variety of different shades. Any of those tans, those browns are all going to work with the navy. It's a contrasting color. It just makes it work and it pops. And it really does, I think, it's now become a classic look. Now, if you're going to have fun with color, don't be afraid to try a burgundy, maybe a dark green, maybe even, you know, probably avoid blue because that's usually the color of the uh, the jacket. Yeah, you'd be surprised at what color combinations work. Be careful with jeans. You can pull off jeans. Andy Warhol used to do it all the time. Yeah, it is going to be a more casual look, a little bit more fashion forward, but if you've got it in you, you like the combination, go for it. And to be straight up, I oftentimes will wear my western boots 
with jeans with a blazer. I like that combination, especially if I'm down in Austin, Texas, visiting UT, the school I went to. Now, if you really want to get adventurous, maybe look at corduroy. You're going to look at moleskin. You're going to see cavalry twill. Tons of different trousers out there. A lot of these lesser known, but what's cool about these is that they can all work with the blazer. In a suit, you wouldn't be able to bring this in because you got to keep, you know, mount trousers and jacket need to match up. Or a sports jacket, it just those colors wouldn't necessarily work. But because we're going with this blue, with this dark solid color, we're able to have a little bit more fun with the trousers. Now, in general, you're going to want to stick with leather, more formal shoes when wearing, you know, the blazer with all the combinations I've talked about. This is going to be something that's just a step below a suit, going to be a step above the sports jacket. That being said, there are situations in which, okay, you got that blazer with a pair of jeans, you're going to pull off some leather sneakers. It can be done. But again, you really need to know what you're, I'm going to say for most of you guys, sticking with a casual dress shoe. We're talking bluchers, we're talking Chelsea boots, and a variety of brogues, from full brogues to semi brogues to quarter brogues to even long wing brogues. In fact, now that I'm thinking about it, I just feel that brogues are perhaps the perfect dress shoe to wear with a blazer. There's just something about, you know, having that bit of texture. It adds a bit of style. If you don't own a pair of brogues and you've got a blazer, guys, consider it. They are just incredibly versatile. Now, of course, when it comes to accessories, always look to maybe put in a pocket square. Not always. If you're going to have a little bit of fun with the neckwear and you choose not to wear a pocket square, go for it. Tons of options out there. You can bring a little bit of color. You don't want to over accessorize. You don't want to do too much. And that's why usually with blazers and neckties, you're going to see a lot of more traditional neckties out there from regimental stripes to solid colors, usually in a darker color. And it's okay if you actually even match the jacket, which I always think is a very nice muted monochromatic look. If you want to make the outfit a bit more casual, nothing wrong with bringing in a paisley or a a dot type of necktie. And if you want to go old school, bring a little bit of Winston Churchill, how about just go with a bow tie? Yes, so many guys forget that the bow tie is actually just as formal as a regular necktie and it stays out of the way. And hey, yeah, you look at men that have changed history have worn bow ties. All right, gentlemen, so what video to watch next? How about how to dress casually as an adult man? Seriously, do you know how to dress casual and still look like a man versus a boy? Guys, I got you covered in this video. Boom, right here. Oh, yeah.